How's it going everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Chase and today I'm going to be going over four different self-defense tools that you can use to keep yourself safe while living the van life. So without further ado, let's step inside and get to the video. All right, let's do it. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna get this one item out of the way because I know it's a little bit controversial depending on who you are and where you live. That is firearms. Now this is my personal pistol that I carry almost every single day, especially when I'm camping or going out hunting. It is a nine millimeter Taurus G3C. It's a very popular carry model. Um, they're fairly inexpensive. Uh, you can buy one of these for around $300. I believe I picked mine up on sale for $250 and it's a very reliable gun. It shoots well, it handles well, and I really like it. And just to show you guys that this thing is not loaded, there is nothing right here. Chamber is empty, safety is on, this firearm is safe to show. And of course, this is a personal choice whether you want to carry a handgun, pistol, firearm, whatever with you or not. Now, if you do want to carry a handgun for your own personal protection, I highly recommend that you do your own research upon your state and states that you might be visiting because every state has different gun laws when it comes to carrying one of these for personal protection. Minnesota is different from Wisconsin. Wisconsin is different from Arizona. Arizona is different from California and so on. You might be legal in one state and illegal in another. So do your research and know the laws before you carry one of these. So now that that part of this talk is kind of over, I just wanted to go over some of the pros and cons of carrying a handgun for personal protection when living in a van. Now the pros of a handgun is the fact that it is small. And when you're living in a van, you're in a small space. Base. So let's say someone breaks into your van, you're in a small space already. This pistol can be maneuvered very easily in a small space. You can move it around and protect yourself. Another benefit of this particular weapon, you don't necessarily have to fire a pistol for it to be effective at self-defense. Just owning one of these or pointing at someone who may be trying to harm you is a great deterrent. You may never actually ever have to fire one of these, but having one can definitely save your life. Now the benefit with a 9mm is you have options for different rounds. You have hollow points which is most commonly used for personal protection, you have full metal jacket which is more commonly used for target practice, and you also have something called rat shot. And what rat shot is, is pretty much a shot shell that goes inside of a 9mm handgun. Now they do make them in other calibers, but 9mm I believe is the most popular from my experience. Now one thing I wanted to just quickly discuss about the rat shot, rat shot usually has 11 to 12 size shot inside of it, very small. Now the benefit with using rat shot in your mind, nine millimeter is it serves as a great deterrent and more than likely it's not going to immediately kill the person you are shooting if you had to do that. More than likely, if you shot someone with a rat shot, they would think twice about coming at you again. Rat shot is good for about up to five yards max. At that point, the shot's gonna spread out way too much and you're not really gonna be hitting much of your target doing a lot of damage to them. So if you do decide to use rat shot inside of a nine millimeter, remember that it needs to be within five yards. Now going on from distance, the benefit also of a handgun for self-defense is you can use it at a distance. The person that you're defending yourself from does not have to be right next to you like a lot of other self-defense items such as pepper spray or taser. You can keep somebody at a distance. You have a little bit more control of the situation. If someone is coming at you with the intent to hurt you, you can still keep a distance and protect yourself. You do not have to put yourself in danger of getting right up next to the person who is trying to hurt you. Now the bad things about a gun is of course the fact that it is a gun and it is a lethal weapon. If you were to shoot someone, you have to deal with the consequences and that depends upon your state, which is why I said at the beginning, do your research on what state you'll be carrying in and what states you'll be visiting. For example, Minnesota has a duty to retreat law, which means that before I can use this, I have to try at least to get out of the situation. I can only use this if there is no other option. Now other states such as Texas I believe have a stand your ground law which means you do not have a duty to retreat. You do not have to try to get out of the situation before you use your firearm. However there is any other option where you do not have to use this do it. This should only be used as a last resort where it is your life or their life. Now that got a little bit deep there, but those are the facts about carrying a pistol. And if you do decide that this is the route that you want to go, remember to learn the laws and be safe. All right, now on to the next thing, which is not as lethal as a handgun. 
a baseball bat or otherwise known as a tire bat. Now this is something that you can pick up at pretty much every truck stop. That's where I got this one. It is an aluminum tire knocker. You can buy these in wood or aluminum or whatever. But the fact is that this is gonna be one of your most simple self-defense items. It is a blunt object. It is small enough that you can use it inside of your vehicle if you had to. It is large enough where you can use it outside your vehicle and you can still do a good deal of damage to someone who is trying to hurt you. A tire knocker or a baseball bat is simple. It will not fail. It is a blunt object and we as humans have been using blunt objects to protect ourselves and fight since the dawn of time, which is why this is probably going to be your most reliable source of protection. All right, so now moving on to something that is within the same ballpark but a little bit different, and that is a hatchet. Now this isn't necessarily a self-defense item, but it can be used as one, and it is multi-purpose. Now I bought this hatchet for firewood purposes. It has a little fold-out saw on the back, so you can cut down some branches, you can chop wood. Uh, it's a great little tool, but it can also be used for self-defense. It is a dual purpose. You don't necessarily have to buy it specifically for self-defense. It can be used for other things. So if you're wanting something that is a multi-purpose or you're really short on space, a little hatchet might be the way to go. A little bit crude if you actually had to use it, but it could save your life. Now moving on to the last thing, which isn't necessarily lethal, but will inflict a lot of pain. Bear spray or pepper spray. There are some great benefits with bear spray. One, it is extremely strong. I mean, this thing is pretty much pure capsaicin shooting out of it. I mean, it is used to deter bears. Imagine what it'll do to a person. Another benefit with bear spray is that you can keep the attacker at a distance. You can protect yourself from a distance like the firearm. This stuff will shoot up to 30 feet away. So if you have an attacker who's trying to hurt you and they get within 30 feet, this is a great option. Now for the third benefit of bear spray, just like the hatchet, it is dual purpose. You can obviously use it to protect yourself against humans, but its main purpose is obviously bears. So if you're in bear country, it's a two for one. And with that, I'm gonna end this video here. Now those are the four tools that I keep in my van for personal protection. Now, some of them are a little bit more aggressive than others, and I know that, but the main goal of these tools is to keep you safe in a dangerous situation. That is what these tools are for. They are to keep you safe. Now, I hope that this video helped you decide which self-defense tool is right for your situation. And if you didn't find any of these to be useful for your situation, I hope you liked the video anyways. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care and stay safe.